Hey, this is Klaus with your personal ski analysis. Uh, let's have a look at your turns. Um, actually very impressed with how much you have improved uh, from the last ski analysis I did for you now nearly three years ago. There is a big difference visible and you obviously got some great coaching and were able to make some really good improvements. To see this even better, I put the two clips next to each other and if we slow that down a little bit, uh, you will be able to see that there's quite a difference visible here. You can see that you're now skiing these short turns much more dynamic. You're able to carve the turns cleaner. You're getting much more speed out of the turn in comparison to uh, what happens on the left side here. Also, especially in the steeps, in the steeps on the left, we can see that your short turns were more like a series of hockey stops where you have to swing your skis around in between turns. And in contrast, contrast to that now on the right, we see a nice round turn shape. You're able to build up pressure earlier, also here in the steeps. Before we continue with your analysis, let's have a look at some key elements of your turn that you're doing differently now. And let's go back to the analysis from 08. In your first analysis, we observed that you have to turn your feet a lot at the beginning and also in the course of the turn to get the skis around the corner. The reason for this was that you were not able to come forward enough at the start of the turn and that you were skiing your short turns too much over your heels, only using your skis boot to tail. As you could not pressure the front parts of your skis sufficiently, you had to actively turn the skis, which then came out even more when the terrain got steeper. The main goal from analysis 1 was therefore to change your turn initiation. By bringing your hip more over your feet at the start of the turn, you should be able to build up pressure earlier and ski around the turn with less rotation. Let's go back to the short turns in the red run and what I did was I synchronized uh, one turn here. Both of these uh, images you're now at the end of a right-footed turn. And if you have a close look at what happens now at the turn initiation on the left, how you're moving your weight further and further back, which uh, makes it pretty clear that you have no way of getting more pressure on the front parts of your skis and how you end up with your center of mass more over your heels. Whereas on the right side, you're uh, showing more commitment to move your body up and forward down the hill. Commitment to face the danger, to throw your body in this direction and rather than to be passive and come up and back. And the result is that if you do it uh, like you do it on the right side, that you're able to build up pressure early. You get the skis on the edge early and now when the pressure builds up, you're in a much better position. And if you have a look at your skis, how they shoot out of the turn here, uh, in comparison to what happens on the right side where you get pushed in the back seat more, you have a bigger spray, a little stem and a loss of performance. Perfect, so that's uh, what we want to continue to do. Continue to move forward, continue to ski these turns active and show commitment to move our body down the hill. As a reminder again, this image here, again the end of the turn, how you move your body up and forward, down the hill, get your body over your feet and are able to build up early pressure. Sorry for the bad quality, but I hope you're getting the picture here. Perfect. Other good things that come with the ability to build up pressure early are that you will be able to show much more upper body, lower body separation if you can compare these two images, that you can play much more with inclination and that your turns in general become more active, more dynamic. Great, that's where you're at. Let's now have a look at the things that I would suggest you work on next and uh, where you still have room for improvement.